There's a lot of content on longevity, but it tends to be hypothetical. So stay tuned to find out how I reverse my biological age. Hi guys, Tony here. Today is episode one of my series, Reversing My Biological Age. And this is with uh, Vice President of True Diagnostics, Ryan Smith. I figured no one better than him. And if you don't know who True Diagnostics are, they're the most advanced epigenetic testing company in the world. And they've just released a new clock called the Omics Clock. I recently brought True Diagnostics on board to do testing for my own clients. And I figured for myself, why not have the man himself, Ryan Smith, look at my own results. We can look at my own interventions and he can give his opinion on it. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at an overview of the clock, just so you know all the data that we're going to be looking at okay. yeah got it right here amazing um but basically we, we've spent the last three years creating this new algorithm with harvard which is definitively the best aging algorithm ever created um and so the results are going to look very similar but our prediction of all outcomes are better than any other clock head to head okay it'll look a little bit like this but then we'll also be able to tell you your relative risk of disease um based on your current aging for death cancer stroke heart disease, type 2 diabetes, COP, and depression. Um, we'll also be able to tell you what sort of systems are increasing your aging the most. Um, so, you know, how is your cardiovascular system, inflammation, uh, endocrine, um, and we'll actually be able to tell you which is contributing the most to your aging oh, out of amazing. all these traditional okay, yeah. biomarkers. So like your albumin, your HbA1c, your hemoglobin, your creatinine. We also have uh, several different uh, peptides and proteins and then also some metabolites. And we're actually even going to be reading out these metabolites and proteins like this. So we can actually tell you what your hemoglobin is or what your hematocrit is or triglycerides or alkaline phosphatase or fasting glucose, for instance. So what we can really start to do now is make really specific recommendations on how to improve this. Um, so for instance, uridine, um, you know, this is a, a product some people put in, in uh, neurodegenerative supplements. Um, it's been shown to help reactivate stem cells. It's been shown to decrease with aging. Um, we can actually quantify someone's relative level um, and then make recommendations on should you supplement with this or not. The same with, you know, carotene uh, dial or uh, lutein, um, you know, another supplement which we know is beneficial, which we can then make recommendations for. Um, so we can do uh, sort of all of these, um, which add a lot more resolution to us for the why are you aging and what do we do about it? Um, and uh, And so... So this new report will be available in just two weeks um, and will give us so much more information as to the, you know, what to do and, and particularly what interventions you should be taking. Because right now, with a lot of the resolution that we have, all we can really tell you is, are you aging or are you, you know, decelerated aging? Sort of where are you at? But now we can really tell you the why. Sure, because otherwise it's kind of process of elimination with um, at current. Just like exactly. Pace of aging, yeah. Correct. And, and so our, our summary reports, uh, we'll also have an inflammation report that will tell you about brain inflammation, particularly CRP and IL-6. We'll have, um, sorry, I'll, I'll show you another one. We'll have an immune report, which will give you immune cell subset resolution uh, with this level of resolution. And then we can also recommend, um, you know, we can look at CD4 to CD8 T cell ratios and other cellular ratios, which can tell us a lot, and then recommend things that we know to increase or decrease these cell types um, to also improve your immune system, for instance. Um, you know, these are all the things we know that are associated with higher levels of these things versus lower level. Um, so we can, uh, we can make recommendations on how to improve even the immune system uh, okay. with aging. Yeah. Correct. You, you know, the, the, we, we really, those first generation clocks is ones like the intrinsic and extrinsic, which are still trained to predict chronological age, are just a little bit limited because, again, they're just correlated to chronological aging. They're not necessarily, um, uh, you know, capturing biological signal. But what, what we did to create this algorithm was create the most robust multi-omic data set that's ever been created. Uh, we did, you know, geno, full genome, epigenetic, transcriptomics and RNA profiling, uh, metabolomics, proteomics. And then we looked at, at, at 61 clinical variables as well to create this score. So it's, uh, it's definitively the most robust clock that's been created to date this you'll be the first one to to go over this with me um and so okay. we'll be able to do some pretty unique things because at the moment my intrinsic age is 13 years different i know i know it typically is five to six which is quite a big uh, so i'm about five years older chronologically mm -hmm. i think um wait a minute four and a half approximately four and a half years older so it's quite a bit in intrinsically older so I'm trying to, as you say, the process of elimination, trying to work out where, where I'm going wrong. 
Certainly. Yeah, no, I think that, um, you know, and again, that's where I think we have such little resolution um, mm. is it could be a million different things. It could be yeah. probably things you can't even control, um, like environmental lifestyle. But this way we can actually really start to yeah. see um, one of the other things that I'll run for you. Um, if you don't mind, I'll show you one more thing. Um, and just to show you, because I think that you would like this as well. Um, so we also have the ability. So all those things that you see, we're predicting HbA1c, we're putting C-reactive protein, everything through methylation alone, um, right? So that's the only input to give us all these outputs. But I also have all of these other things I can run for you too. So if you wanted me to quantify your DHEA or your spermidine levels or your creatine levels or, you know, your taurine levels or your endogenous cannabinoids or alpha ketoglutarate, vitamin E, vitamin C, your hormone levels, your, your, your exposure to PFOS chemicals or omega-3 fatty acids, I can run all of those as well. Um, and so this is, we don't have an, uh, I would say a plan to put this on the reporting just yet, but if you want me to, I can have sort of where you are at in the population with everything from serotonin and dopamine neurotransmitters to stress markers to ketones. Um, and so we could really do an in-depth dive in a way that's never been done before. If you would like me to run these. As well. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Keep an eye out for episode two. Thanks for watching. See you next time.